This is what I want to do. What were you doing before a Little Britain? That was awful. I was completely obscure. Next day, she was the most famous person in the world. We are going to go through the clips that made you, that influenced you, the things you go to to top up your creativity. We are going right up your YouTube, David, and we're making no apologies. Yes, please. <laughs> now, you're going to share a video with us that sums up what you're currently doing. Well, one, one of the things I'm currently doing now is writing children's books. It's actually 10 years since I published my first Bloody children's hell. book, uh, Boy in the Dress. So I'm going to show you a little bit of Rat Burger, which is one of my books we filmed. And basically, I play this evil villain, Bert. He's actually based on someone who was a contestant on Britain's Got Talent. She had this greasy black hair, these dark glasses. He went, oh, I'm going to eat live cockroaches. <laughs> and true to his word, he got out this brown paper bag and he started eating these live cockroaches. Sheila knows that Burt's Burgers are the best in town, but she wants to know if the secret lies in the sauce. Or is it the love that Burt puts into kneading every bun? No, it's the 100% rat meat that goes into every single burger that makes it taste so good. So there you have it, Sheila. No wonder you're loving it. Is there something that lends itself to that type of creative writing, do you think? If you're a performer, an actor, a comedian, you never really grow up. I mean, think back to when you were a child. You're not, as a kid, necessarily interested in kidsy things, are you? No. You want to read things, watch things that feel a little bit dangerous. So that sense of play is something that you hold on to. I mean, that, that's the brilliant thing about being an actor. You get to play every day. We're going to move on, mm -hmm. and it's a chance for us to see something you love watching again and again. There was a brilliant show on television in the 80s, which was called The Dame Edna Experience, which was Dame Edna doing these legendary interviews with people. And I went to see his show live. You know, I saved up um, £25 to go and see him at the Drury Lane Theatre. And it was like the best night of my life. So one of those nights where you go, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to be there on the stage, and I want, I want to be him. And so I picked a clip of Dame Edna on Parkinson, of which there are many legendary appearances. I never thought I'd catch on in America, and yet it's happened in a oh. wonderful, wonderful way. In case you didn't know it, viewers, I am a very big star with They're our huge. cousins across the Atlantic. And I didn't seek it. I was in the cemetery, buffing up my husband's obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, I mean... It's not, age, not age, still funny as it was. Barry Humphries just takes over the show, it's part of the show, but, you know, Dame Minna is looking straight down the lens, just taking over, there's no need even for any questions. Mm. Um, such brilliant confidence, such an amazing character. So what, what were you doing before Little Britain? Well, it was awful. I was completely obscure. <laughs> um, it, did, it didn't suit me at all. <laughs> Our very first gig, the show was meant to start at 8 o'clock. And no one would have... I think we sold, like, two tickets. And, and, we, and the box office had a call. It said, we'd like to come and see the show tonight, but we want to finish watching EastEnders. <laughs> Can they start the show five or ten minutes late? <laughs> There's four of us. We were like, yeah, yeah, great. Great, we have six people watching us now. And that, was, and that was how we started. And so we were finding out how we were funny, if we were funny, you know. And, uh, and so it's part of the process. If, if I'm having a, a bit of a dry day, though, writing-wise, I will sometimes just trawl the internet and YouTube, trying to find something that inspires me. Is that something you would do on a dry day? You would... Uh, yeah, I think documentary is a good one because documentary is kind of real life. So if you kind of take something from real life and fictionalise it, then in a way it's not quite the same as kind of copying someone's sketch. Right. What have you brought to show us next and how did it inspire you? There's nothing better, I think, than comedy that you can enjoy together. And, th and this is a comedienne. We sadly lost her. Her name is Victoria Wood. But her shows are sort of emblazoned on my memory because I remember sitting in the living room uh, with my family, all watching it together, all having a great time. So I wanted to revisit her. Chrissy is 12. She's a champion long-distance swimmer. In three weeks' time, if the tides and the weather are right, Chrissy plans to swim the channel. My catch is Mrs. Hennigan. I don't know where Mr. Hennigan's got to. She's good, because when you get really tired, I want to stop. Keeps you going. Sometimes it's cold. 
cold or I'm not in the mood and she's shouting at me. I think, shut up, you noisy old bag. <laughs> I don't say it. I'm just thinking it. I saw that and I was in Ethiopia with Comet Relief and the chief executive of Comet Relief said, oh, is there anything you've ever fancied doing sporty? Because we're doing this thing called Sport Relief next year. I thought, oh, I've always fancied swimming the channel. He went, you can do it next year. <laughs> it was one of those things I just couldn't get out of it. Some people go, I didn't really like Little Britain, but that swimming thing you did, I did like. And so I suppose it's something hopefully that, you know, nobody can really have a sort of a bad word to say about it when they can slag off my work. So we're going to move on to your next video, which is the Wish I'd Made That yes. category. I'd heard about Monty Python because the films were around when I was growing up. But these were the days before YouTube where you actually, you know, if you wanted to see something, you couldn't really see it unless it was on television repeated. And so Monty Python, the TV show, I hadn't seen. And then they started repeating it, I think, in the early 80s. And I think the first episode, I saw this sketch. And it's so funny and so brilliant. And I remember just being gobsmacked, sitting on my own, age 12, watching it. When you watch it, it's still funny. Some of it's still it's like, are funny. It's like the comedy Beatles. Python are sort of the gold standard of sketch comedy and they've never been better. Fantastic, right. So we need to take a final peek behind your YouTube curtain, something we should be keeping an eye out for in the future. So what have you got? Well, you know, as a judge on Britain's Got Talent, I'm obviously delighted when someone comes on and does really well, unlike Simon Cowell. <laughs> nice failure. I'm also doubly delighted when a comedian does well because that's my passion, mm -hmm. comedy. And this guy I've picked is the runner-up, Robert White. <clears throat> Mum, you should have known I was gay from my school report. Stood for hours in the showers, never doing sports. <laughs> Drink a cup of tea, take some valley, and I'm almost as gay as David. <laughs> this is a song for my mum today. I've got a song for your mum to follow. A song for David's mum. Your son will come out to my There's nothing nicer than being completely ripped to shreds in front of 10 million people live on television, which is what he did to me. Now, the BGT YouTube channel has got millions of subscribers. I think it's 10 million, something like that. Can you feel, when you're filming it, that this is something that's going to go viral? Yeah, you know when there's a, there's a great moment. You know when, you know when everyone's laughing, you're laughing, that you're probably onto something good. But saying that, I remember Amanda Holder telling me about Susan Boyle, that they'd sort of forgot, you know, it was an yeah. awful thing to say, but she'd auditioned. They, they hadn't really been thinking, oh, this, this lady's gonna, you know, be the first billion views person who came out of Britain's Got Talent. But sometimes it is like waving a magic wand. She was one day sitting at home with her cats, the next day, she was the most famous person in the world. Well, Dave Volume, thank you very much for guiding us through your YouTube. Anytime. Uh, that's all we've got time for. Thank, thank you so much. Make some noise for Dave Volume. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank you. Enjoy.